and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Simic Lantern. That's right, we have a Simic deck here that has Chromatic Lantern in it to be able to splash the Nickel Boluses in it. It's pretty crazy, I know, but uh, that's what we have here. Um, so this deck was originally designed, uh, you know, this is a donation deck here, which, oh, I guess I didn't put over here the donation deck part. I can do that. But this deck was originally designed just for, you know, like just for fun um, at F&M and everything and uh, seeing, seeing if you can fit Nicol Bolas uh, in a Simic deck with like Frilled Mystic. And, uh, and it's kind of gone from there. So this is what we have here with it. Um, it looks, it, it does look pretty fun. I'm pretty excited to play this one. Um, if you don't know Chromatic Lantern, uh, if you haven't played Chromatic Black too much, uh, this makes all of your lands have the ability to produce mana of any color. So whenever you have Chromatic Lantern on the battlefield, every single one of your lands is now a five color land. So we will be able to have three black right away. So that curves really well of having Chromatic Lantern uh, on like turn three and then nickel, into Nickel Bolas on turn four because you, know, you get to add the extra mana with Chromatic Lantern. Our best base, best case scenario, if we have like our combo, we're going to be having like uh, turn one, like four, like turn one land or elf, turn two play Chromatic Lantern, turn three play Nickel Bolas Dragon God. That's like our, our best possible. We could have turn three Dragon Gods here with this deck. So, oh no, we can't, can we? Because then the land we're off would be one of the manas. Hmm, never mind. I guess we'd still need turn four in that case. All right, I guess that doesn't work. Because yeah, the land war elf would only add green and not cast it. Oh well, we can we have turn three Nissa though, <laughs> and some other sweet stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's see how it see how it does and everything. We got Simic Lantern. That's why the sloth is better. Because yeah, I guess if we did have the sloth, that would work. Ugh. Yeah, we could have elves. Yeah, elves into Paradise Druid into Lantern. That still, yeah, that's gonna give us turn four. What do we got? All right, it's good hand. Chromatic Lantern, of course, helps our Frilled Mystic as well. Hey, no, no problem, Balding Yeti. All right. See you back here in a minute. Let's just get this lantern in play. So even if the elves get bolted here, we'd still have Sinister Sabotage up for the next turn. We could potentially have Nissa next turn. Probably not have Nissa now. No, so I I like Lanor off more than the Sloth. Like, imagine if like think about this hand here. Think if we had the so the Sloth is the Arboreal Grazer. Think if we had a Boreal Grazer. We would have played turn one, fours, played a Boreal Grazer, put our Breeding Pool into play. And then turn two, we would have just passed because we wouldn't have had three mana to play a Chromatic Lantern. So, like, we would have we would have had just nothing if we just had a Boreal Grazer in our hand instead of Lanor Elf. And, you know, in, instead we have Sabotage and Frilled Mystic available. Like, we... Like, we would just have a forest and a breeding pool in play. We wouldn't even be able to play the Chromatic Lantern. Uh, 
So Denriel, yeah, to take out Growth Chamber Guardian for the Explore Package, you do need... Remember, if you want Wild Growth Walker and everything, you need to clean up 12 slots for all those cards. So that means you'd have to take out uh, Paradise Druid, Growth Chamber Guardian, and something else for those cards. And I just really liked the mana the Paradise Druid provided and everything. Yeah, I have Sabotage right here. One, two, three. Remember, Lantern taps for mana. So this is a four-color deck with green. Fairy Time Raveler. So this is a five color deck. One, two. Hmm. We still have Sabotage available. Seraph, it's going good. Oh, I haven't I haven't thought about that at all. Any cards that get better after rotation. Um that honestly hasn't been hasn't been anything that's crossed my mind at all yet. Should have lethal here. Harness the elements. All right, first game going well. Yeah, the forest hat for blue also. So that's how we had two blue because forest hat for blue with chromatic lantern in play. So they are a five color planeswalker deck. Five color control. Let's get all these negates in. And then Nar sets and manipulations. And we want all these things. Um What eight cards do I want to cut though? I don't really see anything that's that's that bad. I mean, I could just cut Chromatic Lantern and Black Source and the the Black Car and Nickel Boluses. Could just switch out those eight. But that's not like a, a huge upgrade or anything. We could take out Llanowar Elf and Bond of Flourishing. I know we're twenty four land deck. I think the only cards that make sense to cut are either Llanowar Elf, Paradise Druid, Bond of Flourishing, like some combination of those, or Chromatic Lantern and the Boluses. Like those. Yeah, Bond's probably the weakest card.
Basically, the reason why I like cutting... I'm going to cut the Chromatic Lantern package. The reason why I like cutting the Chromatic Lantern package here against the control deck is because they are going to interact with us a whole lot. And if they're interacting with us like Thought Erasures and getting rid of my artifacts and stuff, they if they you know interact with the Chromatic Lanterns, then I may just be stuck with the dead cards of the Boluses in hand. <laughs> Bolus is so fun, though. That's true. That is true. I'm going to try to go against the deck that interacts with us a bunch. I want to go for the consistency. Yeah, I'm going to try I'm going to try infinite bolus later on. And see how that goes. <laughs> Not too surprised they are a Chromatic Lantern deck as well. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah, I could definitely see them being a, a Reborn deck, yeah. This certainly feels like a niv a Reborn deck. We've just seen Thought Erasure, Discovery, Little Teferi, Enter the God Eternals. I don't know, a whole lot of blue-black cards, though. Unfortunate. Obviously, I wanted to counter like a some five mana planeswalker. I train every day. No one is more prepared than me. Keep an open mind. It's basically seeing if we got a negate there, which we didn't. But if we had a negate, you know, then we'd want to keep that up. Ugin so nice, we'll take it twice. <laughs> the game of lanterns, either you win or your light goes out. <laughs> this is the game of lanterns. <laughs> two gin. <laughs> we now have two gin. Yep, there's Nivmeza. So they have they get a Teferi and a Rampage and a Tamio. Manipulation, that would have been a good one. Ravager Worm. Yuck. That card's great. <laughs> Chompy is what I call that Such worm. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chompy. Eat 
Ether itself serves me. All right, we'll just keep up for old Mystic here for this next turn. Yeah, like our opponent's deck. Um, that last song was No Filter by Hit the Lights. I went and checked because... Ugh. Stop having these thought erasures. Because the song switched. Alright, looks like our opponent's trying to figure out what to do here, trying to find a line to stay alive. Um, maybe, if, you know, like, if they have another land drop from just what we can see in hand, if they have a, a fifth, another land here, they could play a little Teferi and bounce something, like bounce like that 2-2 and Angrass Rampage, make me sack another creature kind of thing, or make me sack you again. Hey, Radical Guru. Good evening. Do they have a counterspell here? Nope. Um, attack? Ah, uh, they couldn't trophy their own thing. Secrets manifest before you. <laughs> Yoink. I think we got this first game. I like Tamio in this in this deck. Um and the Ravager Worm looked pretty cool too. I just used Krasis as my blue green card in my Niv Mizza deck. I was playing all the Krasises. Yes, the creatures still have summoning sickness, yes, but the reason why we were able to attack with uh, the Ravager Worm is because the Ravager Worm has haste. So even though that we took the Ravager Worm that turn, it has haste. So normally you don't get to attack with the creature the same turn. And yeah, Tamiya looks a whole lot better for us here than what a Spark Double would look. Sure. Ooh, yeah, I'm going for the Raptors too, Zerf. You made me like Toronto a whole lot whenever I was up there before. And so I want the Raptors to win. Oh, yeah, I bet. Hmm. 
Another way that... Um, that Toronto and Canada... One, one way they do things better than a lot of U.S. cities is that, you know, Toronto is going to the NBA Finals for the first time ever, and there's just tons of celebrating, of course, Sunday night for that, but there were no arrests as a result of people partying too much there. No arrests. So I thought that was awesome. <laughs> it's very loud, but so polite. <laughs> Um, that's kind of weird they took the bond to flourishing. So, like, is this just going to be, like, a Planeswalker removal spell to kill Tamiyo and they just hope that I miss on the this tick up? Like, that's all it seems like to me. So let's just, let's just play it safe then if they, let's just play it safe and just grab the bond to flourishing back just in case. Because, like, if we tick up and we whiff and then they kill my Tamiyo. Alright, so I want... What do I want? I have two Ugins, two Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. I think I want one of those two. I could go for like one of the four Krasises. Let's go for Nicol Bolas Dragon God. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Nicol Bolas Dragon God. No. Okay, there's no Ugin there either. Well, those are just complete whiffs. All right, well, they took something over two lands. If we draw another land here, I guess I'm probably just going to name Krasis with us having... Yeah, it's basically... I think I'm just going to name Krasis because there's four Krasises. And with us having... I think you will find my notes helpful. No! No Krasis. I was going to say, with us having so much mana... So right now, I, like, Nissa is, like, the best thing that I can minus for. I mean, I guess I could minus for the Bond of Flourishing back, and then Bond of, and then Bond of Flourishing gives me, like, three draws to look for Ugin, Bolas, or Krasis. Oh, no, we're, we're doing fine. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's look for... To the library. Let's go to the library. Hmm. Oh, you think we should have minus and grab Nissa? That wouldn't, and then set up for a crisis the following turn after that. Oh, they had my Ugin. Rude.
Wow. Took something over Krasis and Bolas. Our future. What a strange and magnificent world. Oh, this isn't going to work, is it? like I hoped. I just have this Paradise Druid. I will spare you in exchange for eternal servitude. Hmm. I do just have to make sure that I don't mill out. If I didn't have to tap that Paradise Druid... I was thinking that I wouldn't have to be. If I didn't have to, then I could have attacked with all three and made sure that to kill the Ugin also. But I, I have to kill the Thief of Sanity. Because otherwise we're milling out. Reliable, variable. Alright, Dragon God's gone. Whew. Well then. Resolve? So we could have either grabbed the Bolas or the Ugin from our graveyard. So we're playing against blue-black stuff with like Thief of Sanity and things. And we're just going to keep it. We'll just keep it like this. <laughs> Putting Nicol Bolas in a big mana Simic deck is pretty fun. 
All right, do you know what I really like about this hand? So we're gonna have a lot of mana, it's good, but then we are great <laughs> against discard. Love it. See, these blue black decks, they have all their duresses and thought erasures and all that kind of stuff. Well, our cards are terrible. Good luck with that. So yes, I could cast the Bond of Flourishing here, but casting Bond of Flourishing does incentivize my opponent to cast a Thought Erasure. No. <laughs> Those who cannot meditate and prepare. Ooh, just whiffed. Uh, I want to hold up Frilled Mystic. But I also want to attack Narset for two, so they don't get to minus Narset anymore. My mind needs a rest. It's a rough life being stuck on two mana. Or three mana. Sorry, they had three mana. Alright, we are 2 0 with Simic Lantern here. Moving on to game number three. Yep, Mana Dork beat down. I mean, that was a lot of power out there. Six power with those mana dorks. Yeah, nice duress. We kept all the spells on top. Our first three draw steps were, were spells. You know, drawing, what, like Tamiyo, the Bond of Flourishing, the Bond of Flourishing. It was just like, nice, nice duress. Okay, it's not the best, but... You know, we have turn four, Rav Nickel Bolas the Ravager. Oh no, they're faster. Wow, no land drop for them. Didn't play a land off their growth spiral. That's very good for us. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Come on, you can do it. Just pass the turn. Dang it. All right, well, no wilderness reclamation yet. Oh, this is like a green tea kind of drink. I don't know, like a pear juice water thing. I don't know what it is. It's something. All right, so a crisis. So we find an Ugin. I would like to test a new hypothesis. Or I guess I should be looking for my own crisis. And find. No, I want Frilled Mystic. Run. 
Rise, my elemental friend. I'm not going to let my opponent know about the Nicol Bolas before they choose blockers, so they they don't know that I'll have like a flying blocker. <laughs> you love pear juice water? Yeah, I don't I don't know what it is. It says prickly pear water on it with green tea. That's what it says on there. Who knows what that means? That could mean anything. And Nicol Bolas with the concession. So let's get these Narsets. Negates. Um, I guess this could just be a Reclamation deck where I want these Lebrontodons. <laughs> yeah, your, your jank deck here is pretty sweet, Chronic Slayer. I like it. All right, so I'm going to take out... So I think I'm going to take out Bond of Flourishing here, even though maybe I want Bond of Flourishing because it helps me find Narset. Narset seems pretty important. Yeah, Narset seems really important. I don't know how, like, this is, again, kind of like before. I don't think these, these Nicol Boluses are probably not that important, honestly. So I actually think I just want to do this. Yeah, I just want to do that. The boluses aren't really going to be defeating a reclamation deck too often. Hmm. I love this card, though. That's a good card. Oh, wow. What a... What a turn for us. Man, turn two Narset and then turn three and four Frilled Mystics. If we just draw a land. Oh man, we got the land too. I'm gonna shock this in. Ah, they're a Bant deck. The focus and just thoughtfulness before action. So I'm shocking that in so that like next turn if I just play the island and pass, it's not as obvious that I have Frilled Mystic. And Ashiok? Are they trying to do mill us out or something? I don't really even need to activate Narset. I guess they thought we were a command deck. Yeah, that, I could see that. Don't even get to draw extra cards because of the Narset. <laughs> and they scooped it up. Yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna be able to play that and hold up Sinister Sabotage plus Negate. Yeah, Narset was cr clutch there. What a good hand for us. That's pretty nice. Turn two Narset, turn three Frilled Mystic, turn four Frilled Mystic. That's game. Yeah. Narset's real good. That's game. Our deck's working pretty well.
I was... Yeah, I had the baffling ends in there really for mono white and mono red, like game one. I was struggling more than I wanted to against mono red. That's why I had the baffling ends in there. But baffling ends are still good against all these wild growth walker decks around, like especially like the command versions. Uh, and so they don't get to ever come back. I was just hedging by having a couple of the baffling ends in the main deck. Cause I, like I said, I was losing more than I th either thought I would and or wanted to. You know, both of those against Mono Red. Losing game one just too too often. Rats. All right, let's just go. Yeah, we're just gonna go another druid and play this breeding pool in here. Um, and I think I just trade with Lava Runner if possible. Oh no, that's not good. That is not good. So we need to draw like Ugin. So yeah, I'm just gonna play a lantern here, even though we don't have sabotage up for this turn. We need like but this gives us like the possibility of having six mana next turn to be able to draw an Ugin to kill the frenzy. But yeah, we're we're pretty dead. I mean we are very dead. Bleh. So let's go. So this is what all of our Lebrontodons and Ripjaw Raptors in our sideboard are for. And honestly, playing a bunch of negates may not be bad either. So am I? Yeah, I guess I think just kind of got the normal course of action of cut these and cut Paradise Druid or Llanowar Elf. Neither Paradise Druid or Lantor Elf is particularly amazing. Um, yeah, this one they can use any any burn spell, including like the Firebrand and all that kind of stuff. This one they can't. Like it has to just be Chain Whirler and t until we use it. I honestly don't know which one's like the better cut. Um, I guess I'll go Paradise Druid. Do I want a lantern? All right, we'll take out the Paradise Druids, keep one Lantern. Yeah, the two, plow the two power does help us block uh, the Lava Runners better. And it doesn't get Fire Branded. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, neither is, neither is great, no. But... We need, like, the mana sources kind of thing. Sorry, Krasis. Come back later, Krasis, please. All right. We'll see if we can dunk on them here. They're trying to attack. Say no. No attacks for you. Go dunk on them, Lebrontodon. So blocking here would make them use a three damage burn spell. If I block there, it's just a shock. No, Donald, no. 
back up Donald. Do I want to do that or do I want to frill mystic? I kind of want to wait on playing Donald, especially with like Frenzy being like a thing and all that kind of stuff. What if we just go Tamio? What are you looking for, Tamio? Just more lands? Hmm. If I do the Frilled Mystic right now, they with them missing the land drop. I know I noted this somewhere. Let's get Ripjaw Raptor. Ah. Darn. Oh dang. So I was, I was saying like that they, that they may just like keep up like a lightning strike and pass kind of thing. Example. Let me aid your research. No, I didn't really consider just returning Donald with Tamio. Put Tamio down to two loyalty and just let the Pyromancer kill the Tamio right away. I don't I didn't really like that. No, I I didn't like minusing. Definitely wanted it to have more loyalty and make them uh, use more resources. You know, make them just continue to put more resources into it. Find my notes helpful. Ooh. Perfect. Hit the bond of flourishing that hit a land drop, so we get frilled mystic up. Perfect. I don't have any removal for the Steamkin, do I? I guess I have, I have Ugin's. Alright, we need an Ugin. We haven't seen an Ugin yet, have we? No. To the library. Unlucky. Yeah, Tamio just has so much loyalty, just like just like these other planeswalkers, yeah, like four mana go up to six immediately. You know, we used to think how much like Karn Cyan of Urza did that and we're just like, wow, all this loyalty, but now it's like all of these planeswalkers are like four Four mana go up to six loyalty. I guess all of our lands tap for anything. We'll just grab the forest. I have learned much from my ancestors. So that makes us a six-six. So gain three, draw three. Card trigger. I guess you do not want to talk. Seek and find. That was a bunch more lands. 
All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five. We will not fail. Behold, nature's so two. Power. So that's ten mana. Hey, okay, found our Ugans. <clears throat> yeah, BioS and Hydra is pretty busted. Ugh, that thing is so big. Yeah, it's two again again. Yeah, our our two Ugans like showing up together. The two Gins. Fortunately, it's a little late. We have 14 power in the air, and they are at 14. Um. All right, game three. Hey, what's up, After Wizard? Happy Thursday. All right, so I'd say that worked out pretty well for us. Um, I think we'll just keep it the same. Let's try again. Yeah, it's been a great stream so far. Oh no. I mean, I like the first four cards we have, but these are just pretty slow. These are not what I want in the opener. We need like Bond of Flourishing to find more lands, but then we also need to get Donalds and Raptors. Hmm. I'm gonna mull again. I guess so, we get a scry. This isn't really better. But I don't think we go to five looking for Lebrontodon and Ripjaw. Rip Hamilton. Game life. Someone gets hurt. My assistants are painfully sloppy. That's rude. Oh, this so cute. Oh no. Phoenix. So Nissa goes to six loyalty. So if I can 
play Nissa and make a 3-3, three, three, but I can't save Nissa. I will protect the virtue of this world. The land shall conquer you. means a shock would take out my island now. I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this Phoenix yet. Gotta hope they just have like some lands in hand. That's annoying. That chain whirler was so good. I can't really attack this Tibalt now. And to make this a 5-5, a, a five five, I have to shock. Breeding pool is a bad draw for us. We could have just been another land. I, I can't do that. I can't make it a 5-5. Five five. I just take lethal if I do. Yeah, that, that chain roller was a killer. Well, that worked out. Played that pre-combat for us, which, you know, like they should have, but... Hey, Shock. Dang. We put up a fight. Put up a fight. They had a, a lot of good cards there. You know, Tybalt, Rekindling Phoenix, Chandra, Frenzy, Chain Whirler. It's tough to beat all those things. We put up a good fight for our little blue green deck. And we are three and one. Especially that rekindling Phoenix. That was the card that whenever I, you know, whenever I saw that I was like, uh oh. That's that's the one. That I wasn't gonna be able to beat very well. And <laughs> just ignore the Phoenix and the problem will go away on its own. I wish. And like Brontodon and Riptar Raptor are, are like our main cards in the sideboard for that matchup. We didn't see any of those of either card. Uh, I, w I was considering bringing in Mass Manipulation, and then after seeing Rekindling Phoenix, I certainly regretted not having Mass Manipulation.
reclamation deck. Get out of here. Would have liked to draw a land where I could play land, where I could play lantern and have sabotage up. Okay. No. Bad Tamio. Bad Tamio. Ooh, keep that. Ooh, good. Glad it wasn't blink of an eye. I really didn't want them to blink of an eye the land turn. And no land drop. Because, you know, I didn't want to just, like, fr you know, play the Frilled Mystic to counter that and... And everything. They're going to Insight. Yep. Yeah, drafting is a real good way to build your collection on Arena. Yep, absolutely. Uh, sealed is another one. I I like I kind of like Sealed more than drafting, but uh, they're both. Those are both very good ways to build a collection, for sure. I think you get, especially if you're a little good at limited too, you get more out of doing that. Um, than just... Maybe I shouldn't attack to this Paradise Druid. I think I should have just played Ravager. Yeah, I don't think I should have attacked to that Paradise Druid, because whether I attack for three or attack for five, there's like no difference there. Getting all these chemistry's insights. And chemistry's insights a good one. Finding three chemistry's insights right away, not good for us. Yeah, I should not have attacked with the Paradise Druid last turn. I should have played Nicol Bolas. I was just kind of in a rhythm of doing that same thing for the previous few turns and just kind of did it again. 
regretted it afterwards. They get two turns again. Well, that's the best I can do. They get to see three more cards. So those two, plus they get another one here, and they can even Memorial of Genius to get two more. See so yeah, how they could Genius plus cast a Nexus. But thankfully they have no like Ascanta or nothing. You went 77 and 0 to get number one. Hopefully they run out here soon. I guess they can make just Blast Zone for four and kill all my things. I guess they do get to do that. They went Blast Zone for five? I think you messed up your Blast Zone. All right, so the Blast Zones can basically clear up the whole battlefield if our opponent does it correctly. I'm 
Looks like they are doing it correctly. Yeah, we're in game one. I'm not sure why... Wait, they just had a couple opportunities there to, to pop the blast zone. I don't know why they didn't before. Like, I don't know, like, when they're about to take the extra turn, like, why not? Huh. They just let me tick up. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Well, thank you for letting me tick up. So at least we have them on a two-turn clock now, um, where if we would not have been able to find the Nissa, we would have had to like try to play six power onto the battlefield and hold up sabotage. That was that would have been really tough to do. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Yeah, they really need to pass the... Yeah, they need, really need to blow that up, like, just, you know, some other turn before. Still another Root Snare, okay. Well, why not save that for next turn? You're just taking three. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's get all these negates, narsets, and uh, brontodons. And we uh, take out our lantern package. Call it a day. <laughs> the robots are taking over. Yeah, we have zero one one zero one. And zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one one. Both in chat here. All the numbers. Yeah, that was a long game. That was a that was a, a good one. Did I just go sixty two cards? Did I really? I guess I didn't really look at that too much. Sixty-two is lucky. <laughs> I did. Whoops. Cyborg kind of quickly there. So we had fifty-five plus seven. So yeah, sixty-two. The luckiest number. No, we this is a sixty card deck. Don't 
really consider casting Bonda Flourishing and just having to gate up. But I think getting Frilled Mystic in play first to be able to start attacking is important. All right, but now we don't have a land drop, so. Are they gonna blow up the blast zone? No, putting that third counter on it. That's a huge tilt. This is tough. I need more lands. But I also need to kill the Kefnet. So all because I didn't have a land drop, I didn't get to didn't keep the Frilled Mystic up for a turn. Ow. You know what, let's not let him draw a bunch of cards and hit a bunch of land drops. Give them more chances for Kefnet triggers. Uh... Hey Prugor. We are playing this Simic Lantern deck. It's been pretty sweet. We're like a Simic deck playing Chromatic Lantern for Nickel Boluses. It's been pretty fun. Ooh, maybe they'll bounce my Frilled Mystic. Kefnet is just perfect with Chemister's Insight. And Nexus of Fate. Just actually perfect. Oh, cool. You're playing some games of Bant Midrange at the LGS. Very nice.
which cannot protect itself. The land fights for us. <clears throat> Next turn, we could play like Ugin plus a huge crisis. We just got to hope they don't have a Nexus to take another turn to be able to kill Nissa, like with Kefnet and everything. They kept something on top of this Kanta, but didn't reveal it to Kefnet. So, like, what could that be? Is that that's got to be like Reclamation, right? Yeah, so that's, yep, there's Reclamation. It's going to be really tough for us to win from here with them having Kefnet Reclamation as Kanta all set up, honestly. Okay, okay. All right. Six, and then two, four, five, six, seven. Give me just a second here. to turn so I think Ugin's going to get countered I, I kind of want to wait a turn for Ugin I thought they had negate, so they probably still do. Yeah, they still do have negate. Well, at least we got the negate out of their hand, I guess. Dang. Yeah, I haven't seen Death Cab uh, in concert. I bet, yeah, I do bet they put on a real good show. So it's pretty likely our opponent just has a Nexus and then gets to take another turn and flip Ascanta and then we're dead. Kefnet with Inside is really nice. We've talked about. Okay, 
Okay, that's a good sign. Good sign. so close to dead. I am ancient and wise. Heed my advice. To bathe in ghost fire. Be wary of the ground. Two, four, six... Seven, eight, nine. So I still have nine mana for Krasis plus leaving three up. I guess I'm going to just go eight. No! Well, good thing that's not going to punish us. This punishes us a little bit. I don't get to play this Paradise Druid now. Who would have just gone for six? I could have played Paradise Druid too. Hey, Yud. It's going good. Okay, abs and angels. Good chance I do that one tomorrow. Yeah, I was thinking about that one. You would make an excellent informant for let me aid your research. All right, they'll take the rest of the turns now. They get the rest of the turns in the game with Tamio there. It's it's just it's honestly not possible for them to miss at that point. So let me cut two cards and not play sixty two. Sixty two is a little bit of a problem for us. I wonder if I want mass manipulation, take Kefnet and Tamio. Yeah, they were gonna bounce my seven seven blocker. They have they have the rest of the turns in the game. They just found find a bounce bell, bounce all my stuff, and attack me. It's just a long drawn out process, but I have no chance I had zero percent chance of winning that game anymore. They have the rest of the, the turns. And they you know, they have their blink with the, the Tamio that they have in hand. Or that they had in play. I could trim Krasis. Krasis is okay, but not super great in this matchup. I'm going to do that and trim two Krasis. One Bond of Flourishing. So the reason why I like Bond of Flourishing here because it helps us find Brontodon, Narset, Frilled Mystic um, efficiently. You know, it doesn't cost much mana. 
gonna go ahead and shock in. Like our life total doesn't really matter, so we're gonna go ahead and shock in for the land we're off here in case we do draw Narset. We can pull. We have the opportunity to play Narset on turn two. I feel like this is like negate here, right? Like we saw them have a lot of negates. Let's actually just play this crisis and cycle instead of playing the Tamiyo. And give more power on the battlefield. Really want to play that card. So they can put a second counter on this. This is looking pretty good for us right now. They have a lot to deal with here. Hey, QQ. Definitely could use that hype in here. Thank you so much, QQ. Thanks for that sub right there. First sub of the day. Kicking us off there. Really appreciate that. So I'll let them counter Tamiyo now because it means no chemisters in sight. Right? Or maybe not, actually. No. I want my Tamiyo. Oh, that was perfect. They get there in a gate back. Just absolutely perfect. That Narset's reversal. Okay. Well, got punished for using my negate there. No other lands. Okay, they got a bunch of spells. And they had no green mana for a fog. So. All right, we are four now, or four and one. Four and one. Let's get our final boss playlist because we are on the final boss. Getting those final boss emotes in the chat. And here we go. Very good looking hand. Um, yeah, we can have turn four Dragon God here. No! Shock called it. They're like, this is going to be red deck wins. He called it. Ooh, gross. Um, I guess Nyssa. 
None of those were lands, though. Really wanted a land. The next card's got to be a lander, though, right? So we keep a two lander. We draw. That was one, two, three, four. So we've seen four cards so far. None of them have been a land. The fifth card's got to be a land, right? Hey, Jonas Peters. Thanks for that sub. Again, for six months now. You are awesome. Yeah, this has been a fun deck. We got it. Fifth card was land. We got that sub luck there from Jonas. Risk factor. Ow. I feel like this person's just going to cast Risk Factor again on their turn. That's what I'm feeling. And I, w I really want to Frilled Mystic uh, Risk Factor. This is definitely a risk, me just playing, just keeping Frilled Mystic up and not playing Bolas, because if they just don't, that's going to be bad for me. Alright, well, I'll counter that. Gotta counter something. I think you can only do 14 land mono red in best of one. I don't think you can do it in other formats. Uh, well. Yeah, so they probably have somewhere, yeah, in the, the I could see that, like, in the, like, 18, 19 land range. Maybe, like, 17 at the lowest. The land fights for us. So plan next turn is to have Tamio get back Bond of Flourishing and cast that and gain three life. Gotta just keep putting pressure on them. Oh, I love it. They're just getting rid of these spear spewers. Nice. It's good for us. Wow, didn't even activate them. The past is never forgotten. Uh, 
anything. If we would have hit a forest there, I could have played Nicol Bolas the Ravager as well. That's, you know, it was the best card to hit was a forest. But we hit an island. Frilled Mystic. Hmm. says Rise my elemental friend I'm just going to play Ravager here. Take out that last card in hand. Which was a risk factor. So they need to draw a cheap burn spell here off the top to pair with the Lightning Strike. So in case they had one in hand. No, they did. Uh, they did. No. In case there's one in hand, you know, we're getting rid of that, so we're making it so it had to be the top deck. Ugh. Tried so hard. Alright, so this is just a really burn heavy version of Mono Red, so we definitely want all these negates in. I don't even know if we really need the Brontodons, honestly. Yep, in the end. Hmm. You know, before I cut Paradise Druids, but this doesn't seem like a Chain Whirler version of Mono Red, so I think Ch Paradise Druids is going to be better for us. But maybe, I guess I'm, maybe I just take one out, or I take out a... F no, I like Frilled Mystic against just Spell Heavy. I, I do like Frilled Mystic quite a bit. Maybe I don't play all four Brontodons. We'll play three. It's just three mana, three, four. No, I'm going to cut a Sabotage. Yeah, I'm going to cut a Sabotage with bringing in Frilled Mystics and Negates. Or like with bringing in Negates. Oh, honestly, Narset. Yeah, actually, I probably should play the other Narset, shouldn't I? Because they are a risk factor... You know, I'm just not used to the red decks built around Risk Factor. But yeah, Narset um, does help stop that card by quite a bit. That was a good hand. Hey, uh, Lolly Jaeger. Welcome. Doing good? Having a good Thursday so far? So they're deciding between a tough six card hand here, it looks like.
Well, it's not really uncastable. So if you play Risk Factor on your opponent's turn still, you, you can draw one card with Risk Factor. So it's not like it's un uncastable. But yeah, you'd have to cast it on your opponent's turn, and then you only draw one card. <laughs> you just cycle it for three mana. So it certainly... It still shuts it down pretty hard. All right, Ripjaw is our roadblock. Yeah, extreme loss of value. <laughs> there you go. So I'll block the Lava Runner, which is only one power, so that if they, you know, it's still going to be hard. For, it's going to take two bolts to kill Ripjaw. If they want to. Okay. So we should probably just have our negates up now. And I'll play the Llanowar Elf to... Be able to block a Pyromancer. Like, we'll just trade Land World for Pyromancer. And we should have this one. Yep. Good job, Negates. So do I want Narset instead of the Sinister Sabotage? Do I want one copy of Narset? It's basically only good against... Well, maybe not. It's basically only good against uh, Risk Factor. No, I'll just keep the Sabotage in. All right, let's hope we draw Ripjaw and Brontodon again. Those are really important cards for us. Uh, so far, we've played... This is our second match against Mono Red. We lost another one where uh, we lost game one. All the games were close. Game two, we had Brontodons and Ripjaws, and we won pretty easily. And then game three, we did not have Brontodons and Ripjaws, and we lost. And so it's... Same thing kind of going here. We played a really close game one and lost, and then we had Brontodons and Ripjaws and won pretty easily game two. And now we'll see if we can still get Brontodon and Ripjaw. Being on the draws really puts a lot of pressure on our hand being good. I like the Frilled Mystics quite a bit. They can two for one counter stuff and trade with a counter something and trade with a ground creature or get pressure on and you know start attacking I wouldn't want to play Narset over a Frilled Mystic Yep, this is our final boss fight. We're 4 and 1 right now. Yeah, Monoret's a a typical boss. The two decks we've probably played the most for boss fights just throughout the months. Have been mono red and Esper. All 
All right, waiting on the opponent. We're waiting on you, opponent. What happened to our final boss? Don't go away. Let's have a good game of magic. We want a good game three. Boo. Boo. Well, we did win. We were victorious there. Five wins. We got two mythics, including a mythic I don't have. So it has to be one from the new set. So I have all the cards in, in all the other sets, so... Man, I haven't gotten a, a card that shows the back. Like, I haven't gotten an actual card from Card Rewards in a long, long time. Let's see what we got. Nice. Finale of Devastation. Very nice. Cool. Good league there. I think our deck performed really well honestly this is some this is a fun janky deck right here um nothing really to honestly nothing really to change i re yeah i liked what we had going on uh <laughs> is chromatic lantern and having is having chromatic lantern and the boluses like completely optimal no but it's a lot of fun and they they did some good work for us and yeah this was really sweet Simic Lantern. Um, so I guess let's update this over here to be five and one, so I can have that right there. But there we go. GGs. So yeah, thanks Chronic Slayer. Thanks for this this deck. This was a pretty sweet one. All right. If you're watching this video later on on YouTube, I hope you hit that like button. It's somewhere over there, and the subscribe button would be nice as well.